You can get in trouble for saying almost anything these days on a college campus, depending on what the administrator's whims Everyone are. Everyone can be offended by something. Hey, it's Kennedy for Reason TV at Freedom Fest, sitting down with Greg Lukianoff. He's the president of the Foundation of Individual Rights and in Education, FIRE. So what's hot and fire right now? Um, we always have more ridiculous cases than I can usually explain in a five minute session, but one, the one that uh, is going on right now that we find kind of amazing is free speech zones have really made a comeback. And what free speech zones are on campus are tiny little areas where administrators say these are the only places you can protest, these are the only places you can hand out uh, flyers. And these are things we've been fighting since day one, and they've really kind of come back into fashion this year for some reason. Uh, and we have a case at University of Cincinnati, public college. They were trying to tell um, young Americans for liberty uh, that they had to give 10 days advance notice to use a free speech zone that was 0.1% of the entire campus. And if they tried to hand out materials, these are students attending the school, um, that they would be arrested for trespass. You can get in trouble for saying almost anything these days on a college campus, depending on what the administrator's whims Everyone are. Everyone can be offended by something. Oh, yeah. And sometimes they're not even offended. The, uh, this year, there's a major theme, I feel like, is just this very pure kind of like, don't you dare criticize me kind of like parental kind of thing going on. That's pretty audacious. Yes, I think so, too. And you have written a book. I have. That, that touches on this very subject. Tell us about it. Uh, it's called Unlearning Liberty. Um, and the second title is uh, C Campus Censorship um, and the End of American Debate. And what I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make the point that after 11 years of looking at college censorship, that this is starting to have a negative effect on the way uh, our country talks within itself. Um, I think it harms our ability and inclination to debate if the one institution that's supposed to be making us deeper, more honest, harder thinkers is actually saying, and if you disagree, kind of shut up. What will change it and how do you change it? I think there's, a, there, there's some cultural changes that are actually fairly easy to implement and then there's some structural changes that need to happen. The cultural change is just we have to make the idea of talk to the smart person you disagree with, seek them out. Um, if we can, if that actually becomes an intellectual habit among educated people, that would solve so many problems. But isn't that what academics are supposed to do? Aren't they supposed to challenge one another's ideas in order to make them better? That's totally what they're supposed to do, but that is just not possible if you can get in trouble for having the wrong opinion on campus. Because I, I think sometimes some of these administrators who are particularly fond of speech codes think that what happens if you say, don't say anything offensive, don't say anything controversial um, because you can get in trouble, um, they think that those ideas are just going to go away. But what ends up happening is people just end up talking to people they already agree with. You, yeah. And instead of uh, ameliorating group polarization on our universities, we're supercharging it. Yeah. And, and what can students who are watching this right now, who are in school, mm -hmm. who are feeling the backlash and the persecution yeah. for their ideas, what can they do? Well, first go to thefire.org. Um, and we have uh, the top 400 schools in the country. We have all their speech codes on there. And if your university has a speech code, it's a great fight that you can win um, to, to uh, organize students against it. Or a free speech zone, for example. Um, you, you can really get students from all across the political spectrum to fight that. So it's a great way to get people talking and thinking about freedom of speech. And that being said, 65% of the 400 colleges that we, uh, that we, look, uh, that we analyze um, have red light speech codes. And this is just a complete scandal that not, not, not enough people are, are, are know, know is out there. But it's a great opportunity at the same time to make free speech an important issue on campus because uh, this generation is take, kind of takes it for granted. That they'll, be, that, that they'll be all of these restrictions on speech, but it's unconstitutional at a public campus. And on a private campus, most private campuses claim to value freedom of speech. And if they do, you can't value freedom of speech to, to get people to attend their school and then say, yeah, but you can't really upset anybody with, with uh, your op-ed. All right, well, thank you for educating everybody on this subject about education, Greg.